The steamy weather has led many people to the warm waters of the Jersey Shore, but there's something out there that may be spoiling the fun. Researchers are trying to find out why the waters are seeing an abundance of one nuisance that we've all felt the sting of when taking a plunge. Ed Rogers has the story in tonight's Environment Report. Here's another large one. You can see how long these tentacles are. You can spot the sea nettles almost anywhere in the Barnegat Bay this summer. You don't want to encounter this jellyfish. Children, anybody bumps into this jellyfish is going to get a pretty painful sting. And uh, there's, they're, they're just everywhere at some times a year. Although there are no exact population numbers, there have been accounts of booms in jellyfish numbers along the East Coast. Stan Hale and other researchers have begun looking into the possible increase. One likely cause? fertilizers and animal waste that are washed into the bay. The information that do we do have suggests that water quality is a component of it because water quality, that is the high nutrient loading, nitrogen and phosphorus, stimulates the growth of algae, which stimulates the growth of small zooplankton upon which these jellyfish largely feed. Another possible factor for the boom in the jellyfish population, changes in the salinity and the water temperature in the bay. A global warming has been identified as potential cause. Ken Abel at Rutgers University has a long-term data set that shows that the temperatures in the bay over the past two decades have increased. That is, it's warmer spring, summer, and fall, and that could also be contributing to an increase in the abundance of these. The floating docks and bulkheads that crowd the waterfront may also be playing a role. The early stage young jellyfish, called polyps, attached to the structures. The underside of a small floating dock can contain more than a million polyps, which can bud off many more millions of jellyfish. And the only place where people have been able to successfully, successfully reduce the number of jellyfish is by removing all of the floating docks and piers and bulkheads and things like that from a system. Besides being a painful annoyance, the sea nettles can also have an indirect negative impact on the marine environment. They eat plankton that feed on algae. Too much algae leads to a loss of seagrass that's home to crabs and other species. This is one of the problems with the eutrophication. With that algae killing the, the seagrass, these things hide out in seagrass. This is where they forage and feed. So when the seagrass goes, you, you lose your blue crabs. The state DEP has held a series of public stakeholder meetings this summer to develop a strategy to protect the Barnegat Bay. A series of recommendations could be released next month. Ed Rogers, NJN News, Tom's River.